Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. It's a joy to be here again to share fellowship with God. We are compelled tonight to stream our service from the studio because of the prevailing circumstance in our nation. And so we don't want to put um, the safety of anyone to, to jeopardy. And that's why we believe um, we can still achieve what God will do as we take advantage of technology and media. Unfortunately, the network in our dear country, again, it, it's, um, it's a burden at this time. Suddenly, networks have been so down. Uh, we, we understand there's an intelligence, but those who can connect as much as is within your power, connect. And if you can't follow the live service, you can as well connect the, the, some, of, some other times, maybe later tonight. There's no barrier in the realm of the spirit. There's no impediment. There's no hindrance as touching the transformation and transmission that the presence of God and the word of God can engender in the life of a man, regardless of space and time. There's no barrier at all. But the challenge we have in services like this is sometimes it becomes difficult for people to be focused. So you need a lot of discipline and focus tonight to make the most from this service. And because we are streaming to virtually all the all our audiences across the world, I'll, I'll, I'll be doing more of teaching tonight so that you, you can follow. I understand many people may not really have that discipline and many people may have a lot of things and come bring them at this time. But as much as it's within your power, stay focused so that you can make the most of what God has to offer. Tonight was supposed to be a miracle service, but we also understand that it may be difficult to people who have very serious needs that um, we may need to minister to directly will not be reached. We are shifting it by a week or two. And so sometime within the month, we are going to have that service. Nonetheless, we we'll still pray for the sick. You know, there are those who have enough faith to receive just by the spoken word, whereas there are others, their hands must be laid on them before they receive. So for the benefit of everybody, we are shifting it. Nonetheless, you can still receive healing and miracles tonight because what we are about to share is one that brings all of the bounties of God to his people. Glory to God. And so tonight, I want to share on the glory of intimacy with God. Praise God. The glory of intimacy with God. While I was preparing for this sermon and this service, I took time to x-ray my work with God for the past 10 years, 15 years. And I realized one thing that has been constant in my spirit one yearning that has been constant in my spirit is that burning desire to have a tangible walk with the holy spirit to have an experience a consistent experience with god an experience so rich that i can bank my life on it has always been my desire to be able to talk to god at any time and to always be able to hear God and to experience his presence and to experience him to a degree where I can represent him and reflect his reality to my world. That has been the most consistent body in my heart in all of my work with God. Now, this is not something I, I put in myself, but I've discovered that has been my desire. Any day, any time you ask me, what do you want? without missing word consistently i should be able to tell you that i want to keep experiencing god i don't want a christianity where you are full of uncertainties you don't know whether if you talk to god he will hear you or whether he will reply you don't even know when last you heard from god when you have a challenge you rather run to men than to run to god because we are not even sure if you go to god Anything will come out of whatever it is you go to do in the, in the secret place. And then you walk around the world in your job, in your career, in your everyday dealing. And nobody can trace God to you because you can't reflect God. I feel that is the worst form of existence. There's nothing that will give you fulfillment in life if you have not come to that point where you know that you know him. And you know that you are known of him. And this intimacy can produce tangible results that can impact people and impact your world. Intimacy is not just a theological understanding that God is in you and God is with you. That is very correct. 
but intimacy beyond that theological truth is a deep personal relationship with God and that relationship is characterized by your love for him your increasing knowledge of his being your devotion consistent devotion to him and your faith and trust in God when these things are in place then it means you have a relationship with God I want to give you 13 articles of spiritual intimacy anybody who has an intimate work with God these are the things that defines your existence and if you know them you can practice it listen as you begin to grow in God and begin to challenge spirits and deal with existential issues you will know that Christianity is not emotionalism you know it's at the level of babyhood Christianity that you think it's all about your emotions now emotions are beautiful God gave us emotions as the test boards of existence this is what makes us appreciate existence but what we are dealing with here is deeper than emotions you can be highly emotional yet not be intimate like I told somebody, you can be highly emotional and not be anointed. That's why you feel so much emotion. You command demons, they go nowhere. You feel so much emotion, you command cancer, it doesn't dematerialize. You feel so much emotion, you command bones, they are not healed. That is to tell you that although emotion is part of it because God allows it to help you enjoy the process, but the reality is deeper than emotion. So when we are talking intimacy with God, it's beyond crying. Because you heard a, a song that appealed to your soul. There are scriptural articles that defines what intimacy with God represents. And I give you 13 of them very quickly as we begin to proceed. The first article for intimacy is consistent seeking of God. When you find a man who has a relationship with God, his soul is always seeking and pursuing after God. Anytime the desire, the hunger to seek after God begins to die, your intimacy with God has been affected. In fact, it's an indicator that you are no longer walking in a deep experience with God. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, look at the body of the Apostle Paul. His body was not to be popular. His body was not for, for to be the biggest apostle in his generation. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto, de unto his death, that I may know him. The guy wanted to partake with Christ even in his death. I want to experience every dimension of Jesus. So it's a heart posture. When you find a man who is intimate with God, the heart is always seeking God. Not because God is lost, but because he never has enough of God. The more he experiences God, the more he wants to experience God. And God told us that is the formula of having a walk with him. In Jeremiah 29 verse 13, he said, And you shall seek me and find me when you shall seek me with all your heart. So you see that you are in a place where your heart is all out for God. You can't rest. You never get to that point where you are satisfied. This is why you know people who are on fire for God based on their pursuit, rugged and passionate pursuit of God. I remember when we began to encounter God. My goodness, we could attend spiritual program from Monday to Monday, from Sunday to Sunday. We were never tired. If you like, preach for 10 hours. We are there. Every scripture you open, it enters our soul like honey. Because the heart is seeking more. The heart is sick. This is what God condemned the church in Ephesus for. He said, you are doing a lot of exploits. He said, but you have forgotten your first love. That desire, that seeking heart posture has gone. You are now after preaching. You are now after popularity. You are now after blessing. He said, you've lost it. If you find an intimate man, he always desires and yearns for more of God. In Proverbs 8, 17, he said, I love them that love me. He said, and those that seek me early shall find me. So the first indicator that you have an intimate walk with God is that your heart burns for God. There is always a desire to seek him, to know him more. When that desire becomes numb, know that your walk with God is under attack. The second article for intimacy is love and devotion. Seeking is a type of love. But when it becomes a lifestyle of deliberately, as in creating a space for God in your life on a daily basis, know that you have intimacy. That's where devotion comes in. Jesus was teaching on this subject in Matthew 22 verse 37. And he said unto them, he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. If you read this same scripture in the book of Mark, he added with all thy strength. So when you find an intimate person, his life is devoted to the pursuit of God. He's not just a seeker. It has become his way of life. And so there are articles that suggest devotion. 
number one is prayer so there's nobody who's intimate with god that does not spend time in prayer because prayer for you is not asking god for things necessarily there's a place for asking pastor japheth was teaching us on tuesday you begin by asking but there are deeper realms there is the seeking realm in prayer there is the knocking realm in prayer where you say i stay here with god a man that dwells in the secret place of god that is a devoted life you are devoted to the way and the culture of prayer psalm 145 verse 18 said the lord is nigh unto them that call upon him and to all that call upon him in truth so you see these are people who are devoted to prayer they are day and night they are calling upon the lord the bible said the lord is nigh unto them the lord dwells with them the lord lives with them they carry his presence like a canopy the second dimension of devotion is study you can't say you are intimate with god and you are not devoted to study i'm not talking reading to go and preach i'm talking reading to search the depths of god i'm talking reading to know him more i'm talking studying to find the unsearchable mysteries of god psalm 119 verse 105 the guy did business with the word of god until he came to a point he said thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path that means i don't have a life outside your word i move based on the illumination that the word gives to me you think you can get here without being devoted to study this is not a place for people who hear scriptures that men of god quote in message this is not a place for people who get one or two scriptures because somebody quoted it or they saw it somewhere it is a place for those who sit down with the word because they have come to a point where the word is their philosophy the word is their inspiration the word is their orientation the word is their compass for navigation this is intimacy devoted life to god and that devotion is first of all in prayers then it's in it's in study then it's also in fasting joel chapter 2 verse 12 and 14 it said therefore also now said the lord turn ye even to me with all your heart in fasting and weeping and mourning he said and rend your heart and not your garments he said turn unto the lord your god for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and great in kindness and repented him of the evil he said who know it if you will re return and repent and leave a blessing behind even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the lord your god he said when you turn to god in fasting most likely he will also turn to you so when you find people who always have an intimate work with god they keep turning their hearts to the lord in the place of fasting and that's why the face of god is always shining upon them so you you can't pray you can't study you can't fast as a way of life and god is not experientially a reality of your existence it's not possible and then devotion also speaks of service and fellowship when we gather together like this serving the lord it triggers levels of intimacy matthew 18 verse 20 the bible says for we are two or three are gathered together in my name he said there i am in the midst of them so when you find those who are intimate with god they are committed to a life of service and when intimacy begins to die you begin to struggle with service i remember some 10 12 years ago <laughs> we will go to church there's no there's no money for transport <laughs> where is that luxury is it not when you eat that you talk of transport when we finish we trek our way home trek kilometers sometimes when you get home you are exhausted i, I remember one, once upon a time i trekked home from church at night when i came to the house i fell on the floor i couldn't even take off my garment there was a scorpion on the rug where i slept i felt something prick me at the back twice i didn't even, i was too tired my weight killed the scorpion when i woke up in the morning that was when i discovered i slept on the scorpion thank god i was wearing something thick it would have been terrible but the scorpion died i was too tired i couldn't stand up when i woke up in the morning it became a testimony i snapped it and took to church <laughs> see they shall tread up but scorpions are suffering <laughs> see everything gives you joy today you tell people come to the house of god they say I, i'm tired i don't have transport you don't it, there's no fire burning inside you oh my god if that thing is raging it will be your strength the next day wake up go out to do more because there is a passion there is a love quotient there is devotion for god and by the message of god we have carried that zeal till date you must be devoted in service you must be devoted in study you must be devoted in prayer you must be devoted in fasting you can't say you, you love god you are intimate with god and you fast once in a month really you are you a seeker no no that's not how it works intimacy love and devotion the third article for intimacy with god is worship and adoration when you find a man that loves god 
when you find a man that walks with God, see, the thing breaks out of your spirit. When you say out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters, one of the dimensions is adoration, is worship. See, there are times when songs are playing in your spirit. You have to go and look for the lyrics. You don't even know them. They just break out of your spirit. Because the service does not begin and end when you came to church. Activities are going on in your spirit consistently. There are times when the thing just breaks out of you in a place that you shouldn't be doing what you are doing. But you, are, you, you, you have to be disciplined to control it. Because of intimacy with God. John. 4 23 to 24 he said but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father where in spirit and in truth if you read the original rendition of this scripture he said they shall enter the spirit and worship him in spirit so it's a life in the spirit that means at all times your spirit man is enveloped he said for the father seeketh such to worship him for god is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth this is what paul was speaking of in ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 and 19. he said be not drunk with wine wherein is excess he said but be filled with the spirit how do you get so much of god around you how do you get overflowing with god he says speaking to yourselves in psalms in hymns in spiritual song singing and making melody in your heart to the lord singing and making melody in your heart to the lord there are times when you just you are washing and then you just remember the blessed the blessedness of god and while you are walking it's not church it's service in the heart we bless you lord you are holy and forever as you are singing tears you know this one is not a song somebody sang it's your spirit connecting with the depths of abba Oh, this is what the elders knew. That's why you hear them speak of quiet time. There is a time where they withdraw and they, they are quiet in God's presence so that their spirits can minister to the Father. It's a training. You train your spirit man. Look at what they are doing in the throne room. Revelation chapter 4, verse 8 to verse 11. They just gather around. They say, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night saying holy 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 lord god almighty which was which is which is to come he said and when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever verse 10 he said the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crown before the throne saying adoration is going on thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they were created you think they are in the throne room by chance there is a culture there there is a civilization anybody who carries God's presence is a man overflowing with adoration I'm showing you through spirituality this is beyond emotion it is a life it's a culture it's a civilization a civilization of seeking and continually seeking a civilization of love and devotion a civilization of adoration to the one who sits upon the throne oh my god this is where they know your depth because when it comes to adoration many times you don't learn it it is your spirit appreciating God based on how much of him you know you see that when we begin to adore God we will be separated into different cadres of worship you can't adore beyond the, the much of him you know you don't just sit down and start fantasizing over diamond when you have not seen one you don't fantasize over cars if you have not seen them but when you see a car and you understand the luxury that the car commands you can sit on your own and your mind will be indicted of that car because you have seen it you have entered for those who have an intimate work with God this is what happens to them there are times when you just sit down and the majesty of God becomes real to you you will break into tears oh my god <laughs> thank you father intimacy there are molecules of intimacy and if you are intimate with God these things will define you see sometimes you don't even have words you are just walking around and you are just chanting chanting the chant may not be coherent is your spirit talking to the spirit of God you are just talking it just you are just psalms hymns melodies all sorts are just breaking out of your spirit you think the people who do did those things they practice it 
It's a river. It's a river. But as you plan it and develop it and practice it gradually, you come to a point where the spontaneity begins. Those people who did these things, they've grown to that level. And that's why every time you, you, you follow some of these things, God becomes real to you. Because it came from somewhere. Number four. Intimacy with God is commanded by faith and trust. If you don't build faith, there's a level in God you can never reach. Hebrews 11 verse 6, But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. It says, For whoever cometh to God. So, those who come to Him, they come by, intimate, by faith. So, faith is the key. That's why I told you, intimacy is actually the work of faith. Whoever cometh to Him must what? Believe that He is. And is the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. See, this is why most of us are so emotional, yet we don't have a relationship with God. Because we don't believe. And because we don't believe, we don't seek him. We can't, we can't approach. Whoever cometh to him must first of all. So the key to coming is faith. It's a trigger for intimacy. Hebrews 3 verse 12. He said, take it brethren, lest there be any of you with an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. So the moment faith dies, men depart from God. And the moment faith is activated, men are drawn to an intimate walk with God. Psalm 73 verse 28 says, But it is, a, it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. You draw near when you put your trust in Him. People who trust in other things, they run away from God to seek refuge in those things. But some of us, that God is our all and all, we have to call upon His name day and night. So our faith becomes a trigger for intimacy. Number five, obedience. I'm showing you why some people are so emotional. They think they have an intimate work with God. They don't have. Are you seeing that all I'm showing you here, prayer, as important as it is, is one out of many. <laughs> there is a heart that seeks God. Then there is a devoted lifestyle where prayer, study, fasting, and service is. Then there is faith and trust. Then there is adoration flowing from your spirit. Then there is obedience. Look at how Jesus puts it in John 14, 15 and 21. He said, if you love me, if you claim that you want to have a relationship with me, he said, keep my commandments. In verse 21, he said, he that hath my commandment and keepeth them, he said, it is he that loveth me. And he said, it is he that loved me that, uh, that shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. You can't be walking in rebellion and say you have intimacy with God. There are many people who are so disobedient to God's instruction. But when they come under an atmosphere where they are singing some songs that have melodies that appeal to their soul, you find them weeping and wailing. And the angels are looking at them. You? This, is, this thing happening to his biological process. It will only trigger intimacy if you begin that journey with repentance. But if it is all about emotion, you don't have a work with God. And the moment you leave that atmosphere, you will know that you don't have a relationship with God. You want to build intimacy, you must become very fast in obeying God. John 15, 10, he said, If you keep my commandment, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. So one of the healthiest molecules for intimacy is obedience. When you find men who are obedient to God, God is near to them. They can hear God any day, any time. Even when they are not asking, God keeps speaking to them. Because he knows that if he speaks, they tremble at his word. And his word means something to them. Glory to God. But find people who are disobedient to God. They shout and do everything they know. Yet, the presence of God is scarce in their lives. Glory to God. The sixth molecule of intimacy is knowledge. The more you know God, the deeper your walk with God begins or gets. John 17 verse 3, Jesus speaking, he said, and this is life eternal. He said that you might know thee, that they might know thee, the only through God and Jesus whom you've sent. So you don't have a life in the spirit. You don't have a relationship in the spirit if you don't know God. Knowledge is powerful in the realm of the spirit. There is a knowledge that can separate you from God. You read Genesis chapter 3 from verse 22 in particular. He said the man has become like one of us. What happened? Verse 22. Genesis 3, 22. 
He has become like one of us, knowing what? Good and evil. Before he stretches his hand to take the tree of life, let us send him away from here. So there's a knowledge you have that separates you from God. And there is another knowledge you have that draws you to God. In this scripture, the Bible shows us that the knowledge of life draws you to God. The knowledge of good and evil takes you away from God. And if it doesn't take you, God himself will kick you away. That's why Jesus said, life eternal is to know him. Are you following? So the more you know God and know about the things of the spirit, the stronger your intimacy with God. In fact, there are certain things you hear about God, it will awaken you. There are certain things, if your spirit just becomes aware of them, energy and life surges into your spirit. This is why people who have intimacy with God, you find them pursuing truth. Pursuing truth. They keep, he said, buy the truth, sell it not. Because they know that therein is the strength of their work with God. When a man's spirit is dry of revelation, that man's work with God begins to die. But the moment his spirit is awakened to truth, you see that his relationship with God also becomes stronger. Psalm 119 verse 105, I quoted already for you, it said, thy word, the knowledge of thy being and thy ways. He said, it's a light, a lamp unto my feet and a lamp, lamp unto my path. Number seven, more like of intimacy is the fear of the Lord. No matter how emotional you are in God's presence, if you don't obey God, if you don't fear God, if you don't grow in the knowledge of God, you have no relationship with God. And it may, you may think it's a joke until there is a, an issue that you need God's manifest presence to create a change. That's when you will know how dry of God you are. And this is the undoing of many Christians. They think they know God so much until there is an, an issue that only God's manifest presence can make the difference. They now discover that God is not in the ecosystem. They will finish doing all the talking, doing all the charade, God will show up. It's like the experience of the prophets of Baal. <laughs> may that day not come. See the audacity Elijah had. He gave them from morning to evening. I don't need long time. The one I am working with, if I call, he will answer. There is even a realm where you enter. Isaiah said, he said, before you call, God will appear. He said, while you are here talking, <laughs> there are realms to this matter, sir. So it's not how long you cry. If he is with you, he's with you. And if he's not with you, he's not with you. And this is what the men of old knew. This is why they patterned their lives after these realities. So that when they need God, God will not suddenly travel. Because Elijah was making mockery of them. He said, maybe their God have traveled. He said, but my own God answers. And to show you that this is not a coincidence, he created an atmosphere that made what he was looking for impossible. He said, fill the altar with water. So that when fire comes, we won't say it's dry season. And the moment the guy cried, fire came down what audacity is that if you obey god if you fear god if you know god you will discover that your life will prove that god is real the fear of the lord psalm 25 verse 12 and 14 quickly let's move faster he said what man is it that feared the lord he said him shall he teach the way that he should choose he said the secret of the lord is with them that fear him he said he will show them his covenants. And who are the people who have the secret of God? You are no longer servants but friends. For I have revealed unto you what? The secrets of the kingdom. So when a man fears God, he becomes a friend of God. And the proof that he's a friend of God is that the secrets of God are committed to that man. We are a godless people. See, these things I'm teaching you, I'm doing it deliberately. Two weeks ago, I taught you on the blessing. Last week, I taught you on, on the fear of the Lord. Now, I'm teaching you on intimacy. These are systems that bring distinction to your existence. And when I talk of distinction, I'm not just talking about your charisma setting you apart. I'm talking God manifestly partaking and participating in your life so that God is proven through you. It's a dimension of existence and not many have it. The fear of the Lord. Number eight, article for intimacy is humility and brokenness. Nobody who knows God is arrogant or proud. Believe me, unless your knowledge of God is shallow, there is a realm you enter in God. The reverence for God will humble you. You can't even say what you want to say because you know you, you are not permitted. I'm not talking 
being intimidated by God's presence. Righteousness gives us boldness to stand in God's presence. So when I talk of fear of God, I'm talking reverence. I'm talking honor. I'm talking adoration for God. And then when that fear of God hits you, the physical proof is brokenness. When you find the man who fears God, one of the indicators his life demonstrates is brokenness. Because there are things he can't say. There is a way he can't even appear. Because he knows God hates a proud look. So even his disposition will be managed as one who is under God's government. When you find people who are full of themselves, they've not met God. See, they can tell you many lies of how many times they've gone to heaven, of cherubims, of thought is a joke. And the way you will prove this is that check their life. The things that God's presence, only God's presence occasion will be lacking in their, in their lives. You know God, we will see it through humility. We will see it through reverence. We will see it through brokenness. Even in the natural. How many of you stand with people who are greater than you and you are arrogant? The moment you stand or walk with somebody who is greater than you, your disposition will change. So a man who a man can't claim is walking with God and is proud and arrogant and full of himself. No. That man doesn't have a walk with God. When you have a walk with God, he will be broken. Look at the scripture. See the people who know God. Psalm 51 verse 17. This is David speaking. He said, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. He said, a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. The guy had journeyed in the realm of God. He knows what pleases God. Now, there are many sacrifices in the realm of God, but he summarized them. He said, the totality of God's sacrifices is a broken spirit. When you find a man who breaks down in God's presence, he said, that thing means more to God than a burnt offering. Not because he's saying God does not receive other sacrifices. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.